I'm a nurse. And I currently work nights. It's a total drag. But I'm hopeful I can go to days soon, since some of my coworkers are planning on retiring. Anyway, I was working one night, when just after 3 a.m. my son's monitor alerted me to sounds and movement. No big deal at all. He probably coughed loudly or sneezed or something. He's three now, so he generally sleeps all night. Bring it up on my phone. And I see him and my wife sitting on the bed. Again, no big deal. He might have cried out or gotten scared or something. I was about to close the app when I noticed they were acting strange, almost creepy. And when I say almost creepy, I mean creepy as balls. They were sitting on the bed together, both of them, just staring up at the camera with blank, emotionless stares. The night vision is black and white, so they had white, eerie-looking eyes. They didn't move at all, aside from their visible breathing. They just sat there staring at the camera. I close the app and give my wife a call to make sure everything is okay. I never get to call home on lunch. So in a way, this is kind of nice to get to talk to my family while at work. It rings a couple times before she answers. The very groggy hello. It was like she was dead asleep when I called. And she looked wide awake when on the camera. Hey, you guys okay? Uh, yeah. Buddy came in like 15 minutes ago. He seemed scared, so I said he could sleep with mama. I'm confused here since I saw them in his room a minute ago. Literally 60 seconds had passed since I had closed the app and made the call. Wait, so you guys are in bed? Yeah, I fell back asleep right away. Everything okay? Everybody keeps waking me up. She's kind of annoyed. Hang on a sec. I put her on speaker and bring up the app, hoping I don't see it. When the app loads, I get that pang of intense nervousness in my stomach that I haven't had in a long time since I was a kid in school and realized while I was eating breakfast a paper or something was due that day and I hadn't done it. My heart leaps into my throat. My wife and son are sitting on his bed, looking up at the camera. Same emotionless stare. Hello? You guys are in bed, right? Yeah, we're trying to sleep. Well, I'm looking at his camera and I see you two sitting on his bed. Huh? No, we're in our bed. I know that's what you mean, but I'm looking at his bed and you two are in there. Hang on, she says. She's quiet for a second while she brings up her camera on her phone. I hear this guttural, terrified gasp, like she had sucked all the air in the room into her lungs, filling them to capacity. I don't hear this type of gasp from my wife often, only when she's truly afraid, like during a jump scare in a movie, or one time when we turned our backs on our son for literally a second, and he was down by the mailbox inches from the road. I hear rustling of sheets, and the line goes dead. Of course, now I'm absolutely terrified myself, so I immediately call her back. It goes to voicemail. So I call again. I call again, and again, with no answer. Finally, after about four minutes, she calls me. I tell you that four minutes felt like 40 years. Hey, what's happening? I asked. She's absolutely hysterical and crying. I can't understand a word she says. Stop. Slow down for just a second, I say. She slows down enough to explain that they are in the car and driving to her parents. She looked at the camera, and when she saw what was on it, she got up and grabbed her son and rushed downstairs and out the door. Didn't even close the garage. Don't worry about it, 
I said. I'll drive by when I get off and close it. We live in a generally safe neighborhood, so I'm not too concerned that the door is up. You will not go in there, she said. Hell no, I returned. Why are we on camera? She asked. Is it a recording? I don't know, I returned. I'm going to keep watching it and see if there's anything I can tell. Do our code words with Buddy. We have code words because we're nerds. We've seen too many pod people in imposter movies. So we decided a long time ago to make code words with each other. To be able to tell if one of us was an imposter, we have a couple code words. But we also have a three sentence story that we recite together, each saying a different part alternately of each other. I hear her on the phone saying the things we taught our son. He giggles as he says them. He does every time we practice. Doesn't have any idea of the real meaning. We're both convinced he's our son. My wife then says our part, and I'm convinced she's her. We made up these words as a complete joke to ourselves. I never once in my life ever imagined we'd actually need them. Unreal. She got to her parents safely, and it was hard to hang up. Told her we'll figure it out in the morning. Hopefully just a glitch. She said she didn't think it was a glitch. When she was running out, she had run past our son's room, and the door was open. There's a little flashing light on the back of the camera that indicates that it's connected to the internet. It gives off just enough light that when she ran by, she thought she saw out of the corner of her eye a shadowy outline of what could have been an adult sitting on our son's bed. It sends chills down my spine to think about. Knowing they were safe out of the house is the only thing that kept me at work that night. It was a long four hours, but I kept checking the camera every chance I got. Sure enough, they were sitting on the bed, staring up at the camera with emotionless gazes. I studied them to see if I could see any patterns. From their breathing to their blinking, the breathing was steady and looked normal. It was their blinking that would tell me if this was some kind of bizarre time-looped freak accident video or not. I intently stare at my phone and count the number of seconds between each blink, telling myself if it is a loop, then their blink should be even, and occur at the same time each time. There was no pattern to their blinking. It was erratic and random, just as a person's blinking should be passing hours are what finally sealed the deal, that this was not a weird looped video of some kind. My son's window is visible on camera, and on camera I can see that it's getting brighter outside his room. His curtains keep out just enough light to prevent the camera from exiting night vision, but let in just enough to be able to tell that the sun is rising. I try to figure out what the hell I'm going to do before I leave work. Calling the police comes to mind but I talked myself out of it. First of all, what am I supposed to say? Someone's in my house that looks like my wife but isn't? Worse yet, what if they are entities of some kind and the police do go over and it kills them or something? I decided to tell a coworker about it. He is a firm believer in the paranormal and might have a suggestion. I show him the video and tell him the story. His initial response of that's creepy as hell doesn't help much, but he says he wants to go over and check it out. He says we both should, to see if not my wife will try and act like my wife. I tell him absolutely not, and he said we should at least go to the house, even if we don't go in. I agree on that, since I wanted to close the garage. We got to my house and walked around the perimeter first. Not sure what we wanted to accomplish by that, but it felt like something we should do. The curtains were all drawn, since nobody was there to open them in the morning. So we couldn't see anything. I went to close the garage, and suddenly had this overwhelming urge to go inside and investigate. It was like I just had to know what was going on. So when we went, we walked through the kitchen towards the foyer, 
where the stairs are. It's so quiet in our house right now, you could hear a feather drop. Forget the pin. We stop at the bottom of the stairs and wait a few seconds. I look at the camera again and they are still sitting there. I've never been so scared in my life. My coworker put his foot on the first step and I suddenly say stop loudly. Forget this, we're out of here, I tell him. Come on. I start making my way back to the kitchen. We hear a loud creak in the floor from upstairs. It's my son's room. He has a very loud, creaky board right in the middle of his floor. It's almost impossible not to step on. My wife and I are still deciding if we ever want to fix it. Because it will alert us if he's ever up to no good when he gets older, trying to sneak out or something. Come on, come on, come on, I yell, as I motion for him to move his ass. We're out of the house in about two seconds. Out on the street, I check my phone. Now only not my son was sitting on the bed, same blank stare. Not my wife was gone. Holy hell, my coworker says. That was dumb as hell of us. Do not tell my wife we went inside. She would be so ungodly mad if she found out what we just did. I use my garage door opener in my car to close the door. Before we leave, I look at the camera again. Now my wife is back on the bed with not my son, both staring blankly up at the camera, blinking every few seconds. That was all about four days ago now. Now my wife and not my son are still sitting on the bed, staring up at the camera. They haven't moved a millimeter. We obviously haven't gone back to our house. What do we do?